Welcome to Empowered Living with Evangelist Robin Sherrod. Grace and peace, hello, and welcome to Empowered Living with Evangelist Robin Sherrod. We are so glad that you have decided to join us today because here at Empowered Living, we add value to your life as we point you to Jesus Christ. You know, our mandate here at Empowered Living is for you and I to strengthen that horizontal relationship that you and I have with this word so that in turn, it will empower the vertical relationship that you and I have with the Father, which is seated up in heaven, making intercession for you and I. I am so glad that I am not in this by myself. And I am glad that you are not in this by yourself as well, that we have an advocate, that we have someone that is uh, cheering for us, cheering for our win. And so we are so thankful for that today. Hey, listen, we're getting ready to get into the word of the Lord on today. We want to invite you to join us on our social media platforms. You'll find that information there on the screen uh, for you as well. But we want to go ahead and get into this word today. We are going to be continuing with a topic that we had spoken about earlier and it's simply seize the moment. That was our topic, seize the moment. And we're going to continue with that. Our foundation scripture is Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. And we are reading it from the King James Version as well as the message. So I want to go ahead and go back to that if we can. And I just want to recap and just actually read the scripture to you um, and give you a moment to get your iPad and get your tablet and get your notes so that you can begin to write down the things that God is going to be speaking to you um, personally. I believe that when God gives us a word that um, he uh, applies that word to us. So there is something specifically that the Lord wants to speak to you about today. Um, and you may listen to other uh, podcasts, you may listen to other messages throughout the day, but because of the fact that God brought you here for this day and for this time, it is because, I truly believe, it is because he has something very special in store for you. So when we look at Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22, the Bible reads, and behold, it says a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years. She came behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole and the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, let us go to the Message Bible. The Message Bible states it as this. Just then, a woman who had hemorrhaged for 12 years slipped in from behind and lightly touched his robe. She was thinking to herself, if I can just put a finger on his robe, I will get well. Jesus turned. He caught her at it. And then he reassured her. He said, courage, daughter, you took a risk of faith and now you're well. And the woman was well from then on. And I shared that we lifted the subject, which is seize the moment. We lifted that subject from Matthew chapter nine, verse 20, where it says, for she said within herself, if I may, but touch his garment, I shall be whole. We talked about brokenness. We talked about quitting. Uh, we talked about when you find yourself in a situation where your spirit has been crushed by the demands of life, by the situations of life, by the circumstances of life. We talked about how not only it affects us spiritually, but also how it affects us in our day-to-day -day activities and our day-to-day -day life. And we use this woman with the issue of blood as our example. If you want to go back and you want to recap what was shared before, 
then I encourage you to just go back and you can go to our YouTube channel and you can under Robin Sherrod and you can look at this um, uh, part, the, the first portion of it, and you can uh, gather that information and gather the word and, and allow that word to speak to you. And then you can uh, refresh it by looking at and, and um being ministered to uh, by the second portion here. Also, it will be layered on our podcast and our podcasting uh, streaming platforms for you as well. But getting back to this word here, we're talking about this woman again. We're talking about when you or I are in a situation. I gave an example of when I was uh, going through a very hard time in my own life and how I really experience the phenomenon of when people talk about having a broken heart and having a, a, you can feel your heart, the aches and the pains in your heart. And I had suffered such a pain at one time in my life that I really felt that my heart was breaking. I really felt that um, I could really feel, physically feel the pain of it. And so we looked at this woman that also had this issue. And we talked about how this woman with this issue of blood, first of all, her name was never given to us. It just said it was a woman. And how often are people identified by their issues and not by their name? You know, that's the girl that can't get right. You know, that's that boy that's over there on drugs. You know, that's that dude, you know, that got that situation going on on that internet that no, he don't want nobody to know about, right? He he connected at that hip with that internet because of some of them sites that he's been here. You know that dude. But the name is never, the name is never addressed. It's an issue. You know, the people sometimes are identified before they even get to you by their issue. When, when you walk up to them, that the first thing that the person, that if they think they know you or they think they know your issue, they want to identify you by the issue and not by your name. So this is the, 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 the context of where, what we are. And we, we're talking about the magnitude of what this woman was experiencing. First of all, she didn't even have respect enough for her name to be um, shared. And as we know, names in the Bible are very, very important. But it says, behold, this woman and how this woman who had an issue. And we talked about the different issues of life. And I didn't name the issues because there's too many of them to name. Each one of us have something. And I spoke about how either we are going into an issue, either we are dealing with an issue or we are coming out of an issue. But regardless, we all are dealing with issues. And about this woman's issue in particular. This woman had a very intimate issue. Can you relate? An issue that ran so deep that she didn't want anybody to know about it. But because of the issue that she had, people knew. We talked about over in Leviticus um, chapter uh, 15, it speaks about um, Leviticus um, chapter 15 verses 25 through 27. It speaks about uh, the climate that this woman was in back during those times and how she was considered to be unclean because she had this issue of blood and the fact that everywhere she sat, it was considered to be unclean. Every place that she went, so in her bed, it was considered to be unclean. She couldn't go to the market. You know, back then, the women would go to the well. She couldn't go to the well to draw water because she was considered to be unclean. She couldn't even go into worship because she was considered to be unclean. How often do we feel that we can't even go to worship? that I can't even go to church because of my issue. And it's so intimate that I'm unclean. This woman, she was not able to hold down a job because of her issue. There are some of you that are listening right now, you're not able to hold down a job because of your issue. This woman, she wasn't married because of the issue. How many times do we see where there are people that are not married? 
and maybe they want to be married, but because of an issue. She didn't have any children because she had an issue. So that was something else that was like, you know, a scar upon her because back in those times, a woman's worth back in those times was whether or not she could bear children. We, we know we have evolved from that and that's not the case today, but back then it was. And I'm just sharing this with you so that you can understand this woman's, the depth of this woman's issue and how her story, although it's been told over 2000 years ago, how her story is so relevant to us today because we all again face issues and many of those issues are very intimate. And those issues carry shame and those issues carry guilt and those issues carry condemnation. And we carry that from one year to two years to three years to four years to six years to eight years to 10 years. And like this woman, she had been carrying this for 12 long years. The Bible says that she even went to many physicians. She went to those who she thought could have the answer. How often do we go to people who we think may have the answer? And she gave all that she had. Have you ever been in a relationship where you thought that you were in the relationship with the person that you should have been in the relationship with because you thought that person was going to be able to help you, to, to help you heal, to help you become whole, only to find out that you spent yourself. You may have spent your time, you spent your money, you spent your energy, you spent, some of you have spent your life dealing with and still coming away from, depleted, because the issue is still there. Going to those who you thought could give you some relief, only to find out that they couldn't. Issues. This is what this woman was dealing with. And we talked about um, the, we got a little deeper into the term of disease and the word of, of disease and, and what that word uh, of disease in the Greek, what it uh, meant. And Matthew chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Mark chapter five, verse 29. You're going to find the story of this woman also in Mark chapter five, um, verse 29 in particular. It speaks about this woman and the disease. And it says that the disease was so oppressive, that it was oppressive and that it was painful and that she was suffering of an acute disorder. So not only was she dealing with something that was just uncomfortable in her life, this led to pain in her life. There are some issues that we deal with that are not just only uncomfortable, but they are also full of pain. This is what this woman was dealing with and her story is in the Bible. This woman was hurt. She was extremely diseased. It cost her a lot. And her story is still here in the Bible. Now, oftentimes when we read the stories in the word of the Lord, it's all, you know, sometimes we get that, you know, um, name it and claim it ministry, right? But this is dealing with a situation of a woman and that many people are dealing with and which they come away with and, and, and they're depleted and they have an issue. And that issue will lead to a broken heart. I talked about being in a state again where it was something that was really painful and my heart was really hurtful. But then the word of the Lord tells us here in the scripture you see, God addresses this because he knows that there's going to come a time in our life in which we're going to have to deal with our brokenness and which we're going to have to deal with our broken heart. 
And the time that we are living in right now, it's important to understand who we can go to, where we can go to, where we should go to when we are having and dealing with a broken heart. The Bible says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. This is found in Psalms 34 and 18. Psalms chapter 34, verse 18. The, the Bible says the Lord is close to the broken heart. So those, this woman, her heart was broken. Those of you that are listening right now, you have gone through situations. You got the issues of life that you are dealing with and you have a broken heart. I want to tell you today that the Lord sees he says that he is close to you. Sometimes you feel as if the Lord is far away, that the Lord doesn't know that you are in pain, that the Lord doesn't see. How can a loving God, how can a God who is supposed to be the God of love and everlasting love, how can he allow me to be in so much pain? But I want to tell you that we are in the earth realm. And in the earth realm, we have a prince of the air. And that prince of the air is the enemy. That's the devil himself. That is the adversary. And that adversary is after your life. And anytime that adversary can imprint pain, anytime that adversary can imprint a prison in your mind, anytime that adversary can imprint an issue, something that's embedded, something that becomes a stronghold in our lives, know that he will do so. But in the midst of that, the Lord says he's close to the brokenhearted and that he rescues those who are, whose spirits are crushed. You see nowhere in the Bible where the adversary is close to the brokenhearted. The only way he's close to the brokenhearted is if he wants to break you totally down and totally out. Nowhere do you see the word adversary and rescue. And the Bible talks about how the Lord said he rescues us. When someone is rescued, it is because they are in distress. They are in distress. They are in dis, dis ease. And they have to be rescued. And many times when someone is being rescued, it is because their life is on the line. And the Lord is saying here in his word that he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. He knows that your life is on the line. When something is crushed, it's just not broken. It's just not torn. It's just not laid down. We're talking about something that's been beat over and over and over again. And some of you, your spirits have been beat over and over and over again. But I come today to give you hope and to let you know that the Lord says that he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The Bible goes on to say in Isaiah chapter 53, verses four and five, it says, surely he had borne our griefs. So he is acquainted with our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Every sorrow that you and I have, the Lord has carried. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and he was afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for every iniquity, iniquity that we will ever have. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, the Bible says that we are healed. So again, getting back to this woman, this word that this woman, she came to the living word. She didn't have the Bible like we have now where we can go and read the scripture and know that the Lord is there with us. But this woman who had this issue, the Bible says that she came behind uh, Jesus. I wonder how she came behind him. I want to talk about this woman's posture toward Jesus. And I want to talk about our posture as we come to the Lord with the burdens and the brokenheartedness of life like this woman did. The Bible says she came behind him. I wonder how she was treated by the ones that she walked through the front door. The ones that may have even opened the door for her because they saw that she had some money in her pocket that they could get from her. I'm talking about those that thought that they could help her, but they could not. Or those who really didn't want to help her, but they wanted to take advantage of her. See, those people she went through the front door with. 
There are some people in your life that you go through the front door with. You go through the front door with them. You let them even open the door for you because you think that they are going to be protecting you because they are behind you or they're letting you in. So you think that they're there to protect you only to find out that your heart is broken and your spirit is crushed. But this woman, knowing that she was coming to Jesus, she came from behind him. I want to let you know today that wherever you are, you can come up to Jesus. Whether you come up alongside of him, whether you come up behind him, as long as you're coming with a humbleness in your heart, you can come to the Lord. And she came behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. And I'm mindful of the way that she touched him. She came from behind him. She didn't come through the front again. She wasn't at the front row. She didn't feel that she had to be called up by Jesus. She didn't have to be called out by him. She didn't have to have her hands laid on her. She said, if I could just come from behind. This woman had a pivotal moment in her life. She had a moment in her life where she had to make a decision. Her decision is, do I continue to just sit here and wallow and, and, and until I die? Or do I go to the one who I heard about? I heard about this man and I heard about the miracles that he's done. And I heard about all the great things that he's done. Maybe if I can just get to him, my situation will change. And she had resolved in her mind. She was at a pivotal moment. And I want to speak to you and share with you what a pivotal moment is. These are moments that happen within the course of our lives that can change the trajectory of our life, either good or bad. Some moments are unavoidable. Some pivotal moments are uncontrollable. And some pivotal moments are unexpected. When we talk about a moment, we're talking about in that instance, when we um, describe it as a precise point in time, pivotal moments are big and little moments of clarity that provide new perspective and opportunities to change one's life. You see, there are spiritual moments, there are natural moments, there are relational moments, financial moments, health moments, professional moments, personal moments. Whatever they are and whenever they be, you and I must seize the moment. You see, a wedding ceremony is an event. But a marriage a strong marriage is built on moments. Each moment adds up to the next. We can all have an event that happened in our life. All of us that have an issue, it was because of an event that happened in our life. But based on that event, it, it impregnated us with that moment. And even though the event was gone, the stain of the moment is on the inside of us. And that stain of the moment is embedded in our experiences. It's embedded in our minds. It's embedded in the way that we see the world in which we interact and we come in contact with. So that's why it's important for us to seize those moments, to cast down those imaginations, to bring down those strongholds that come to, uh, to try to, to um, solidify themselves and to build concrete in this, in our minds. So this woman... She said within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, she had a pivotal moment. She had a moment in her life where she had to make a decision. It's just like over in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3, when we talk about the four lepers that was at the entrance of the gate. They said to one another, do we sit here till we die? No, this woman had to have a resolve in herself. She had to have a determination within herself. This woman still had a voice. Even though she had pain, she still had a voice because her voice told her, she said, if within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, you see her money was gone. Her livelihood was gone. Her family was gone. This woman in the natural had lost it all, but she still had a voice. She still had the ability in her loss to find Jesus because she was determined to find him. This woman had a testimony of doom and gloom, but her position was right. She was headed in the right direction. She had the right posture. 
Her profession was right. She still had a voice for God, even in the midst of all the pain that she was going through. Are you able to have a voice for God when all chaos has broken loose from day one to day two to week one to week five to six months to six years to 12 years? But the Bible says because this woman had a voice that the Lord heard her. Psalms 91 and 15, write this down. Psalms 91 and 15 says, when they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Know that when you cry out to the Lord, when you lift your voice to God, when you reason within yourself that I am going after the Lord, know that when you call on him, the Bible says he will answer. Mark 9 and 23 says, Mark chapter 9, verse 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. This woman had to have a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is an important change that happens when the usual way of thinking about or doing something is replaced by a new and a different thing. This woman, she changed her a uh, trajectory from failure to faith. She had a persistent faith and faith met faith. Her faith met faith, which is her faith met the truth. Her faith met Jesus and it changed her fate, F-A-T-E, forever. This woman had a persistence and you and I have to have a persistence in this time that we are in right now. You and I have to have a persistence, we have to have determination, and we have to make a decision that when the pivotal moments come in our life, and these moments are the moments that want to drag us into the pit and not let us get out. When these pivotal moments come, you and I have to make a paradigm shift, which means we have to make a change in the way that we think and the way that we process. And we have to decide that we are gonna to go to Jesus. And when she went to Jesus, he didn't call her woman. He didn't call her a uh, 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 diseased woman. He didn't call her can't get right. He didn't call her damaged goods. He didn't call her nobody. He called her a daughter. So this woman went from a woman who didn't have a name to a daughter. He called her back to her original state. Don't you know that when you are in your brokenness, you think that you are not worthy. God said you are still worthy. You still have worth on the inside of you. You are still his daughter according to sec or his son. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The Lord again addressed her in her rightful position. I want to let you know right now that in your brokenness, wherever you are in your brokenness right now, that God sees you in your original state. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. If you'd like to stay connected with Robin Sherrod Deliverance Ministries, visit us at robinsherrod.com. Partner with us for weekly devotionals, candid conversations, Q&A, and a behind-the-scenes look at ministry life. We'd love to hear from you on social media and look forward to connecting with you next week.